All right, so welcome to the March 28th the Chaos Metrics Model Meeting. I will share my screen here. Um, so one of the things that I, I did want to bring up, so it's good to see everybody, by the way. One of the things that I did want to bring up uh, today was something that we've been talking about in the OSPO community. Um, so there seems to be, at least from my perspective, a real uh, push from OSPOs to start articulating value, not just from the talk we had a week ago, but from like social channels, from conferences. There's there's really, mm -hmm. I think, a, a need here. Um, Don, I saw you nodding. I'm guessing you're- Yeah, you're, well, and I think especially right now, right? We're in an economic downturn. Like they indeed, indeed just laid off their whole program office. Yes, I saw. Is yeah. that everybody? That's crazy. Dwayne, Dwayne said that it sounded like Dwayne and his whole team were let go. Okay. From what I saw on social. Okay. And I know that I, I don't, I don't know fully, but I, I feel like Google has been making some changes. I feel like maybe Microsoft has, been, I don't know. I, but there are a couple of large organizations that have been making some changes, whether it's like, well, so I think uh, this question is probably something we should address or try to help move forward. I think there would be a lot of really good reception in the OSPO community. Um, I think to do the to do group would care a lot just generally. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping we could spend a little bit of time today thinking about uh, metrics or probably you know more likely metrics models that could be put in front of OSPOs that might be actionable for them to start articulating this value component in some way. Mm -hmm. um, so the everything and I think I think that's an important distinction too because I think it really is like people say ROI but they don't actually mean the financial definition of ROI they really just mean like the showing value showing a return for the number of people that they have have working on it so I think I don't want anybody to get hung up on ROI as a financial measure because I think it really is about showing the value that the people in that OSPO bring to the company fair mm -hmm. And then the other um, thing that, and I think that that's completely fair. And I think the other thing that, um, well, two points. One, Don, I think in that conversation with respect to moving it off the financial component, you had done a nice articulation of trying to tie it to strategy was this, this part <clears throat> through here. So I think this will give us some good places to begin. And then the other conversation that came up do you remember this one, Don? It was OSPO work versus open source work. Mm -hmm. And so just kind of differentiating between those as well. And I think the, the focus was to concentrate on OSPO work first. And then that would help us understand how we're working in open source communities. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I mean, I think most OSPOs are, are kind of like VMware where the OSPO is relatively small compared to the total amount of investment in open source. We have loads okay. and loads and loads of people contributing to open source projects, but you know, our OSPO is, is much smaller than that. Okay. And I gotcha. think that's with most OSPOs. There's loads gotcha. of open source work that happens outside of it. And you, you have a sense that this conversation is about identifying the value for those like potentially small group of people within an organization like these I, I think that's the place to start. I think that um, ideally you go beyond that, but I think especially right now, given the financial climate that we're in, I think being able to justify that your OSPO is is showing some sort of value to the company, I think is is what a lot of people are, are focused on right now. Okay, right on. Well, super helpful. Thank you. Um, okay, so I, I don't know really how to begin this here. <laughs> like, so I'm hoping we could talk about how to even begin to produce metrics models that might be helpful for OSPOs. I I I I never thought that uh, ROI such quickly pop up from from the discussion, uh, you know, from from chaos or uh, OSPO, because recently, you know, we just hold up uh, OSPO summit in last weekend, and together in China. 
and uh, and you know that there are a lot of people from different hospitals and they came together to discuss around these things and the the, the final question is that how much value hospital products are introduced to your company and do you have a strong reason to remain these people you know the people who work who is working on who are working at in hospital still uh, continue their work or uh, a company with a company strategy uh, when the situation is become worse uh, cons considering you know in current uh, uh, emotional uh, economic uh, uh, the whole environment so um there are quite a lot of questions and uh, and we discuss what what things can can usually also do for 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 one company um actually uh, the people who has been working who have been working for uh, the company uh, i mean ospo for for a long long time size this they have a couple of things to do uh first and uh, they should produce a uh the whole procedure of process like uh, how to manage the open sources the company use and how to choose that and if some company one if some open source you know initialized from from company uh, how to open source them and uh, to uh, you know based on uh from the uh, in the point of view uh, in the point of uh, compliance, security, and and the risk, and some other risk, and uh, and uh, but uh, there's final question always have been questioned by by high level people in company that uh, what kind of relationship between the something like ROI and the, the value produced by by open source or OSPO. So that's the question. Uh, you know, there's no final answer still from that meeting. And uh, of course, from not from us until now. But um, uh, as we discussed today, I have some thinkings about that. Um, if we have to mention if we uh, just uh, narrow down the discussion topic just for the open source uh, initialized by company and uh, what kind of ROI return from this open source. So in my, my thinking that we have to find a, a direct uh, connection between the business value and, uh, and something uh, very cle cleared defined in in the company to for, for my thinking is that the usage count adoption or adoption count and the so-called adoption count means how many users has been used your so open source software and um, and would they love to use that or they have to use that with, 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 without any other choice? So anyway, adoptions is to uh, is some metric to have very close connections with the business value. And uh, based on this adoption count, we can, you know, what kind of other metrics to impact this adoption count? in the open source world as as we can see that we have many different metrics existing in the chaos so i'm thinking uh, what's the code relationships between the adoptions and other metrics so that's 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 from my very uh, you know initial ideas. Um, and I think that's a particularly challenging thing to measure, right, is, is adoption, because you, 
you just don't you don't know who's adopted your software because they may have they may have downloaded the release from GitHub, they may have downloaded it from a package manager, from an operating system. Um, there are so many different ways to get software that it, uh, measuring adoption is uh, is really is really hard. I mean, that's that's yes. what everybody wants to measure for sure. And I think we need to find, I think we need to find more creative ways, which I think this maybe was what you were kind of getting at, but I think we need to find creative ways to use other metrics that show us whether, you know, kind of, I don't know, that are indicators for adoption, but not necessarily adoption itself, which I think maybe you kind of hinted at. Mm -hmm. Something like a proxy metrics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What about organizational diversity within the community? I'm thinking out loud here. You can tell me no and tell me no why, <laughs> but my, my only logic was as we expand organizational diversity, that indicates that companies have an interest in the project. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I think it's a start, but that's a contribution, usually a contribution metric as opposed to an adoption metric. Um, but it does get at adoption because those organizations wouldn't be putting people on the project if if they weren't using it in, in some way. So I think it's, it is it is one proxy. Um, you know, overall contributors is kind of another proxy mm -hmm. for that because the more people you have contributing to it, they're probably interested in using it in some way, but it's not a, not a direct mm -hmm. measure. It's more, yeah, again, another proxy. Uh, yeah, I still want a response to Dawn's question, how to mirror adoption count. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, you recently open AI and the chat GDP, GDP gave me a lot of thinking around it. So uh, currently we only got, we only ask, uh, if we want to get some value of metric, we are thinking for the trace data existing in the GitHub or some other code host platform like GT. Uh, and uh, of course, some other data sources exist, uh, provide some REST API. But um, it's kind of, it looks like we, we lack of some mirror way to mirror the, the, you know, the evaluations from the people who use that, who use the, those softwares. And uh, this, uh, Evaluation could came come could come from a, a forum, uh, like a discussion, or came from uh, a book, or uh, some books. They would recommend you to use some uh, softwares on some books, like uh, uh, some technical te uh, books. They would introduce several uh, choices around some tech uh, around some technique, and they give you a. Uh, as the writers or author would give you some choice, they give they would uh, evaluate, and uh, also some papers. Uh, they would tell you uh, what kind of software I'm using to produce such data or to uh, to get my analysis result or research result. So all these uh, evaluations are coming from the, the you know the nature language from mm -hmm. the different sources. So if we can use such data sources to help us to evaluate or to predict the future adoptions of some softwares or open source softwares, it would be, it would be really helpful, I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. And um, and I'm still thinking uh, that uh, uh, you know, uh, as and Don, you're right, because for some bi uh, business software, uh, it it's kind of so, uh, uh, business product. We can easily know who are using our uh, product as a software or uh, some other tools because they would buy or buy, buy a license or some something like that. But for the open source, it's really hard to do so. 
because I'm thinking like um, at the very beginning of open source and no one care actually who are using their uh, the open source you know developed or, or, or initialized by the people like uh, Richard Stallman they want to share the free spirit of the open source they don't care who use that but uh, you know in the recent 10 years many uh, commercial uh, collaborations uh, corporations joined <laughs> open source uh, this world they are seeking for the business value of course so mm -hmm. that's making the adoptions or usage um, quite important to help them to evaluate how much value such uh, open source software has been produced by for their company so i think the, um, maybe the value uh, on this open source has been changed a lot in recent 10 years so we have to think in for some ways to produce a, a way to measure this adoption otherwise this is the, not just a question to the OSPOS, but also all, all the and this, this is the question to all the people who joined who will contribute to to the open source software yeah and you know you you mentioned kind of natural natural language discovery and that that got me thinking i think that's i think that's a really good idea and i think we can build on that in other ways so I spent a year or two doing kind of um, market research and competitive analysis. And one of the ways that I would figure out what our competitors was doing was I looked at their job postings. Uh -huh. um, and yeah. you can look at things like job postings and tell if a company is using a technology because they're looking to hire people who know about a particular technology. So exactly. job postings are another good one. You know, even things like like blog posts, you know, a lot of companies will write blog posts about how to use their software with something else or how to, you know, how to use a particular technology. So, you know, even like blog posts and social media might might also be good ways to think about the, you know, looking looking at getting at this from from more, like you said, like a nat natural language discovery. I think that's a really good idea. Thank you. So Especially I mean, now that we have more sophisticated kind of AI machine learning sort of models, we can get at this, I think, in more um, more sophisticated ways than what we were able to you know, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. So so I'm thinking if people from, I mean, the evaluation from the different, uh, um, you know, natural language uh, channels like uh, job posting pl blocks, they would uh, can they if they would uh, continuously give one open source software and a, a positive evaluation mm -hmm. i think that's the indicator to say okay this open source would be adopted for a lot in the future if they some sometime would happen okay the 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 uh, and not that positive uh, evaluations came came up from those natural language channels they would say okay there must be some problem happened in this open source then their adoptions count would be declined yeah yeah i think the i think i think the sentiment is really important um, for sure, whether it's positive or negative. Mm -hmm. So believe it or not, we have, um, I think it would be in here. Electric called job opportunities. Yeah. yeah. This is so it's a, it's angled a little bit different. I think it's about how I as a person can 
understand where I should be positioned. If I recall when we were, you know, like, what should I be working on? Like if I'm in a class, I'm like, I tell my students, you should take a class on Kubernetes, you know, because <laughs> it's going to help you down the road kind of thing. So I think that was kind of kind of the nature of this originally, but mm -hmm. this may serve as a starting point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I post a, a Chinese ancient point point uh, on the channel, on the chat channel. What is that? Uh, in Chinese, it's called You know, uh, when when the water in river become uh, become warm in spring, the duck who swim in the river would would uh, know in very early time because they swim in in the river. Perfect. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> so you needed the ducks to predict the water temperature. Is that kind of the? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Interesting. You should definitely call the metric model that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, what a okay. warm duck. Mm -hmm. I love it. <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm thinking if we could. Uh, and you know discuss together pop up some new ideas what kind of nature language channels we can utilize for these options and uh, you know i i think we can we can have uh, uh, i mean the strong enough uh, indicators for us to predict uh, the adoptions of of one open source software and we can we, we, we can verify that actually I'm thinking to for some specific technical areas. Um, I hope we, you know, all, there are always some um, areas they would uh, open up their adoption count, so we can use that for some, you know, like trend data, and we can uh, test that. So, okay, so this is super helpful. Um, I'm looking at any other metrics in here do, do, do you start the predict uh, work say that, again, say that again june do we uh do you start the predict work about to predict some something uh you mean to, to uh you know predict the options of, of some software right <laughs> Yes. Yeah, that's my thinking, and uh, I'm I'm waiting to do so. It looks like we don't have uh, even one metric about predict, right? And like like my shows, we have some indicators like job opportunities. That's one. Um, yeah, yeah, this one, and we may have more uh, metric to to support to support it to support to predict uh, this metric yeah maybe so it looks looks like um, we could have a tag about predict maybe we could put this tag in some metric. Yep, sure. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's that's good idea. Okay word, right? <laughs> yeah, maybe some metric can be tagged, right? But uh can be tagged can be tagged uh with predict, but some of the metric can it's just uh, the result cannot predict, right? Aha, uh -huh. that's your thinking. Okay. So I'm trying to get that down. So I, June, I think what you're, what I hear you saying is that perhaps some of the metrics are just, they just provide results and that's the end of the metric, but other metrics yes. might be able to leveraged into a predictive model of some sort. Yeah. Okay. 
great. Yeah, that's a good point. I also added, I just put it in the notes in the kind of list of analysis, um, but we could look at LinkedIn and other social like user profile mm -hmm. and technology, mm -hmm. which indicates somebody working at that company is working on it. Mm -hmm. True. Even we can start right now to, to ask the chat GDP that how many a company has been started using some specific software, open source software. They would help you to list how many. <laughs> you will give you an answer, at least. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, is there anything else? So again, a lot of these are, these metrics that we have up here are kind of from the old value working group. Uh huh. So, is there any? And we had uh, the one job opportunities here in row seventeen. Was there anything else in here that stands out? Uh, it's like a project recommendability. It's uh, that's the evaluation directly from uh, from the users. I think all developers. Uh, yep. I would oh, recommend. Yeah. Project. Yep. Yeah, I still suspect that recommendability is okay. It's a word. It's a correct English word <laughs> because it's always yeah, it a big me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm of the, if I understand what it means, then I'm okay with it, whether or not it's in the dictionary. <laughs> yeah, and uh, like project the popularity. I mean, you know, something like star uh, star count. We always say star count is not, not the only metric to measure the popularity, but uh, still it's, uh, it's used by a lot, lot of people or areas. So like Don, when you look at this list and we're trying to answer, you know, kind of these questions right here, like ROI, um, listening to you and Yuhui talk, like this seem to resonate with you as a potential mm -hmm. pass forward. Are there like thinking about the conversation that an uh, OSPO would need to bring to management, you know, or execs? Like, are any of these would they give you any traction in that discussion? Like star count, I probably. Maybe I mean I'd have to read the definitions. I mean when you clicked on project recommend ability it looked like it was mostly um, contributors recommending the project to other contributors which I think is less of a okay. adoption metric but if you if you go back to that list um, yes I think maybe we could look at things like like labor investment is that like people labor um Yeah, so this this gets at kind of the organizational diversity conversation we had, which is, you know, companies putting people onto projects, and one can assume that they're using those projects, or they wouldn't be devoting people to it. So labor okay. investment might be might be an option. Um, as, one of, as one of the proxy metrics. Yeah, I mean, yeah, a proxy metric. Um, yeah. If you go back to that list, there was another one that I thought might be... Um, organizational project skill demand, maybe, because if they're looking for a particular skill in an open source technology, then they probably are using that technology. Um, yeah. So that that would also be a proxy for use, I think. Okay. So yeah, I think some of these value metrics would be um, applicable to this, you know, assuming that we put this into a metric model. Okay, at least good starters. Um, maybe this is, so what I'm hearing is, let's see, organizational, I'm gonna track this a little bit. So this would be... Um, I would just break that out. I would do it as a separate section in the, um, and just list some of the metrics that might be, that we can okay. look at. Do you think this would be under this header? 
this is where this conversation started, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I think that's okay. fine. Okay, so labor. So labor investment as a, this would potentially be a proxy, if I can spell, for right, something like that. Um, what are the other ones? Organizational project skill demand. What what tab in the spreadsheet were you looking at for that? I can't find it. Ospo. Oh, Ospo. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Um, yeah, organizational project skill demand was another one. Okay. Um, job opportunities. Yep. Those are the three that look most most um, relevant to me anyways. Okay. And then do you think this conversation is captured in job opportunities or would that require a new metric? It's not covered in job opportunities. I'm not sure if it's a new metric or if it would be several metrics. I think if you look at natural language discovery, that's more of a way of getting at the information more than a separate metric. Would you agree yeah. with that, Yuhui? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we we make with concrete. Uh, maybe maybe we can centralize the into one one metric to say uh, the natural language channel or 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 something like that or duck. So, uh, I yeah, that. I mean, I I would like to use some metric uh, to say our uh, indicator metric to tell me uh, how much how how much connections or, or collaboration co 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 uh, co uh, co relationships between the these indicator proxies or metrics. With, with adoption count. So maybe we can finally give the uh, a matrix model. Just just to call it adoption count or adoption, maybe. The model or the metric? Model, I'm, because this model should, should uh, have a lot of different uh, indicator metrics okay okay got it um this is great i think this would be really at least as a start to really good to bring to the ospo group next week mm -hmm. what you think Don? I think it'd be a good starting point for conversation. I do. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, I will also miss that one. So if you can, that, I was going to mention that to you um, in Slack. If you could run that one, that would be good. Okay. It'll be my birthday. I'm taking the day off. Ah, Thanks. happy birthday. Thanks. Happy birthday. I'm also going to miss the common meeting. Well, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna miss like all the meetings for like two weeks because I've got some time off that I have to take and my mom's in town, so I'm okay hanging with her. So I'm gonna miss the weekly meeting okay. today. I'm gonna miss the common meeting, and then I'm gonna okay. miss the OSPO meeting. Okay, so like kind of this week and next week kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna miss most of them. I'll put this into a metric model just so it's a little bit easier for people to look at as a single document for that OSPO group meeting. Um, okay, and uh, would you would you pop up the radio record? I, I mean, the radio meeting record of the OSPOs next time. 
uh, yeah. I mean, if yeah, if Elizabeth also missed that meeting. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you. She'll be back for that meeting. So good. Um, super helpful. So honestly, that was the main thing that I wanted to talk about today. Just start moving this forward so we can mm -hmm. have something back to the mm -hmm. to the Oxpo group. And I think yep. we're that's great. Um, we had a couple others that I just wanted to mention. The starter project health metrics model is finally complete. So that is now public. Uh, uh, Actually, I, I want to discuss our, our made final decisions about starter project health metrics model, about the one metric that uh, that reach oh, okay. show. Yeah, I think we still have some confusion around how to implement um, the, oh. the new ratio one. Exactly, uh, especially mm -hmm. for that metric specific metric called, uh, could you scroll down? Yeah, yeah change, change requires the closure ratio. Mm -hmm. And uh, I pop up some some examples or, or in cases in you in the comments. Uh, you you can you can scroll down the comments I post around this metric. Yeah, scroll down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, scroll up. Yeah, show three, three more, more replies. replies. If you can click on yeah. that, three more replies. I think that that's where the discussion was happening okay gotcha yeah, yeah. i gave I, I gave some examples uh, you know uh, to to uh, to be understand the to help understand this metric definition uh, i mean uh there's one example, uh, if we follow the current definition of this CRR, is that uh, community A, if they, um, that's, I almost forgot that. So, so in in general, while well, while you look at that again, um, the way the way I look at this is I, um, especially for something like a change request closure ratio, I I try not to compare multiple communities against each other, but instead I try to look for trends in the ratio to indicate um, improvement or decline in project health. So that's mm -hmm. that's typically how how I would how I would use it. So I'm looking for I'm looking for projects that, you know, their change request ratio is getting higher or lower. Um, so I, I try to compare the project against itself over um, different time periods. Mm -hmm. So that, that tends to be how, how I would, I would use the, it. The reason I want to compare two committees, especially when I come to uh, some specific area, I don't really familiar with these areas. I want to compare those two uh, uh, open source software, which mm -hmm. have uh, some uh, close uh, or the similar uh, technical uh, focus. That's the from the real case, because if we want to choose one specific uh, software as my, de my uh, dependency, I have to compare uh, some, some uh, uh, similar open sources. That's that's from my very beginning requirement, mm -hmm. and of course, like you mentioned, uh, if you already are very familiar with the, uh, the this software, you just care about itself. That's 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 that matter. So the question is that uh, should we have to uh, considering the pull request? from that that ha, ha, haven't been processed from the very beginning or we only considering the pro, uh, pro request uh, in some period. So um, maybe both we are thinking, my thinking, I think they are all have their specific requirements or they're meaningful both. Um, 
how about we uh, have two uh, uh, definition of, of, of data display for this metric to tell people uh, in the in the past 90 days, uh, for example, uh, in the past 90 days, we have uh, 100 pull requests created and we already closed our processed uh, detail thing. So this ratio would be the 50 count, 50%. Per and, um, and also we considering the pull request created before the latest, uh, latest 90 days that uh, uh, and uh, we would uh, also count uh, the pro request uh, pro, uh, processed uh, in uh, within within the in current uh, in the latest 90 days that's the definition from uh, from current uh, uh, definition of the of this metric. Mm -hmm. So we show this both of these two results. And the, the reason um, I mean I think I think that's probably an implementation detail that you can decide. I mean that's that's sort of you're applying an extra filter on the metric. So maybe maybe we need to better define the filters on the individual metric definition because I think that what, what you're doing is really you're filtering out some of the really old um, pull requests that are open because you really care about whether or not they're closing the pull requests that come in now. Mm -hmm. um, I actually care about for all time because um, a pull request that's been sitting there for a year is never going to get merged because there's going to be too many merge conflicts and it should just be closed without merge. Yeah, sure. So, that's true. Yeah. So what from my perspective, like I, I don't want that extra filter. Like I want for all time because I want people to go back and close those crusty old pull, re pull requests that are never ever going to be merged. Um, mm -hmm. But but I think I, you know I mean I think your use case is is totally valid. I think that's a filter on the metric. Can you click on the metric itself and let's just have a look at what the what we've put in the filters. Yeah, I'll have to go track it down because it's not in here. So give me just a second. Oh, sorry. Uh, let me see I think I've got it. I think it's in common. It's probably um, in common. I forget where, like on this tab. It might be change request closure ratio. Yeah, that one. Yeah, so I think you're applying this first filter to your, um, so you're you're showing that like the, if we show the change request closure ratio for, for all time, but I think you're also having a, like a second one that's filtered by date ranges. So just like the past, you're just looking at the pull requests that have come in over a period of time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sure, I, I think it would be helpful. I uh, We can just uh, like, uh, Add a filter to like people to have choice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I can maybe I add one to create one pull request to this metric to add one filter to to say that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Did you have any other questions about the implementation of this, or was that mostly? mostly no, it? except for this one. I, I'm cool with the other ones. Okay. Mm -hmm. cool. So the, I'll make a note here, but the way I understand it is the starter project health metrics model is fine the way that it has been released. And Yahoo is going to issue a pull request against this metric. Yep. It's used. Is that okay? So um, the filter of this metric. Okay. 
Great. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Uh, so I guess maybe just the last thing that I'd like to to point out is that this we'll get this blog post out, but this is done. So our summary from ChaosCon uh, Europe is is completed. So feel free to take a look at this. I think there's some really great stuff in here. I actually loved how chaos, looking at this how ChaosCon went. Um, and I'm actually really excited about ChaosCon in Vancouver because I think it's gonna to result in really similar things and it'll help us really focus on on what we're working on and reinforce what we're working on too. So I, a lot of these issues that did come up were things that we are doing, mm -hmm. which was <laughs> I felt good about. Uh, and then also gives us focus on what to work on in the future. So please take a look. We'll get this released as a blind post here probably next week. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, I was really yeah. happy with how that turned out. And Sean got some nice pictures. So very cool. Yeah. It was great. All right. Yeah, June, did you have something? Oh, uh, just just one question. I saw the the minutes about the Kioscom meeting in that in that meeting paper, in that meeting doc. Yeah, it's a last okay, meeting okay. Hold, hold, hold up in in Europe. Yeah. Could could you could you open that meeting doc minute? I one? just will. Yeah, yeah. The only question is, uh, I saw there's a lot of question in the first uh, um go up and up I. Yeah, this, yeah, this, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the way that so we, the, the way that we... Yeah, we, we, yeah, you can say we have a lot of, of questions, right? Do we have the answer about this question? No. <laughs> no, we do not, not yet. yet. Not yet. That, that's yeah, why yeah. Matt show oh. here to let us thinking. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but it, actually, you see, like some of these questions right here are what we were talking about today, or at least related exactly. to the today. Yeah, okay. yeah. Well, I wish we had so, answers to all these. So do a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know where these people from? And um, from um, on which uh, organization or company? Um, we don't track that. This from a. Uh, yeah, just from an anonymity perspective or to help people speak freely, we just don't track that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah, please take a look at it, June. And if there's anything on that list that is of interest to you, <laughs> like any of those models, <laughs> I'd, we're happy to move those forward. Mm -hmm. All right. So we are at the end of time. Um, Thank you everybody for a really great conversation. I think we helped to start some of the value conversation and I think we're finalizing the, the metric model that Don you had put forward. So Yahui, thanks for your thoughts on that as well. Um, until next time, we'll see you around, okay? Thank you. Thanks everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.